Hello everyone, I'm Bob and this is the Home Bitcoin Immersion Mining Channel. In this build series episode, we're going to cover the build of my tank. So with that, let's go have some fun. Okay, so before I start talking about my tank, I'm going to quickly mention that I'll be using BitCool by Engineered Fluids as my coolant. Now, the reasons why are, first, I'm in the U.S., and so there's no international purchasing going on if I buy from Engineered Fluids. Uh, secondly, right now their price is slightly cheaper than Thermosafe, and that kind of makes a better choice right there. And finally, but most importantly, um, the material compatibility guide put out there by Engineered Fluids was super important to me. Um, I'm building my own system, and I really need to understand what materials I can and cannot use when I build my system, and that's really what drove my choice. With that out of the way, let's talk about my tank. Now, when it came to make that big first decision of whether to build or to buy a tank, I chose to build my own tank. Why? Well, to be honest, I made that decision very early on when I first started looking into immersion mining. Um, my initial web searches really didn't turn up any good options for home-based systems. Um, all of those options I listed in the last episodes were companies that I've found since then. Um, and also, there wasn't a YouTube channel like this one giving me all those options that are available. Now, I did find a single YouTube channel that mentioned that engineered fluids would make you a tank if you special ordered it, so I did reach out to them and ask for a quote on a two minor tank. Now, when I got the quote back for them, it uh, seemed a little high, and I thought I might be able to make it a little cheaper if I found a local plastic shop to make the tank for me. And finally, you know, as stated in the first episode, I am an engineer. I love designing and building things, and so at that time, I thought building my own tank would be a lot of fun. So I drew up an initial tank design and sent it out to a local plastic job for a quote. I also sent them the list of compatible materials from Engineered Fluids, and then we iterated back and forth on the design until we settled on a final design and final quote. Now, the quote came back slightly less than Engineered Fluids. Uh, the cost for my two minor tank was a little less than $2,000, but since it was made locally, I didn't have to pay shipping. So I approved the final design and had them make my tank. So with that, let's go see what I got. Hey folks, just a quick reminder to hit that like button so the YouTube algorithm will share all this good content with other people and for you to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any good content coming your way. With that, back to the episode. So here is my tank. As you can see, it's fully built, ready to go. And uh, the material chosen by the plastic shop was high density polyethylene. Uh, they chose it from the materials compatibility list because it's pretty cheap. They had it in stock, uh, but one of the big things for them is that they decided to do plastic welding instead of solvent welding, and they just kind of figured that uh, it'd be a better design overall instead of solvent welding, and high-density polyethylene was some material that they wanted to work with. Uh, also, they found these fittings made out of the same material that they could weld in place, which would make for a really good interface uh, when I'm connecting lines. So yeah, that's the reason why they chose the material. Okay, so looking over the design, uh, just start off with the inlets. Uh, as you can see, I decided to split the inlets, uh, one inlet for each side of the tank. Um, I figured that would be better for directing fluid up into the miners. Uh, you also notice that I've got each of these reinforced with a second layer of plastic. Uh, figured that would make it easier for them to weld the design and get it to seal. Also, this gives it a little more reinforcement in case there's any forces on those lines. Now, as for the plenum and flow plate design, I decided to go with an adjustable uh, design. Uh, basically, there's no uh, flow plate welded into the bottom of the chamber. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have small supports and have the flow plate right on top of that. Uh, this gives me the ability to vary the height of the flow plate, which will allow me to reposition the miner within the chamber. Uh, this allows me to adjust that height of fluid above the miner. It also will let me adapt the system in the future in case I come up with a miner that I want to put in here that's a little longer than my initial plans. Now looking at the flow plate itself, I have one here. Um, as you can see, I kind of made it myself, a uh, quarter inch HDPE with uh, chicken wire on the top. And uh, this metal wire mesh should be pretty good for holding the weight of the miner, as well as giving me a ground plane that I can connect a ground wire to if I want to pull static electricity out of the fluid. So that should work pretty okay. Now looking inside the tank itself, um, as you can see, I've got a divider riding down the center of the tank. Um, it does not go all the way to the bottom. There's a few inches of clearance in the bottom to allow fluid to circulate back and forth between two chambers, um, but it hopefully will guide fluid up through each one of the miners. Um, the size here is based on an S19. Uh, I took an S19 and went about one inch in each direction following engineered fluids guidelines. So that should set me up pretty well uh, for running two miners in this setup. 
Now next up is the hot recovery volume. And as you can see, I don't have this running towards the bottom of the tank. It only goes around about that far. Um, I saw this on an industrial tank setup, figured I'd try that here. Uh, my thinking is by only running it this far down, I'm using less material, will make for a cheaper design. Uh, as well as since it's not that deep, it's easy to reach the bottom if I need to clean something out. Now when it comes to the flow separation wall, um, it really is this whole side of the tank and uh, following engineering fluids design guidelines, uh, as you can see the lip here goes down about three inches from the top of the tank. Uh, this will allow the fluid to go over the edge without coming out the top of the tank. So that should work okay there as well. Now with the tank built, the next thing to do was to check it for leaks. Um, you generally want to check it for leaks before you install it in the rest of your system. So if you have to have your tank sent back to fix a leak, you're not tearing apart the rest of your system. So I plugged up all the ports with caps, filled it full of uh, Bitcool. Uh, you generally want to use Bitcool and not water because Bitcool will find leaks that water won't. Um, I left it there for about a week, giving the fluid plenty of time to find any openings. And lucky for me, uh, no leaks. So. Uh, Took off the plugs, drained the fluids, and I'm ready to go. Now, on a side note, when it comes to leak checking, uh, I had to load five different buckets of fluid in and out of this tank, and honestly, that was a real pain, but one thing that really helped is I got my hands on a drill pump. Now, a drill pump is a real simple plastic pump that's powered by a drill. They're really cheap. Uh, they're made for only temporary jobs like this. Um, I have a link below for the one I used. It's super, super handy. I highly recommend getting one and using it for this type of job. So that's the overview for my tank. Now, the next step, of course, is to fix this in place and start building everything around it. Now, I'm not gonna put together a design guide or a how-to guide for that because honestly, everything's gonna be dependent on your setup. Uh, your house is not gonna be like my house. Your constraints are not my constraints. I'm gonna do it the way I can. You're gonna do it the way you can. So I'm just gonna show you what I have after I have it built and I'll talk you through some of the decisions I made along the way. So here's what I built. Uh, as you can see, very simple shelving system from two x four, one x four, and plywood. About four feet wide, about 36 inches tall. Um, and the way I built this is that this is going to hold the tank up off the ground. It's gonna give me a lot of extra room to route lines in and around this. Uh, this also puts the top of the tank at kind of a good working distance so that as I'm moving miners in and out of the tank, I'm not leaning over as far. Um, I also have extra shelving room here. Uh, number one, you can never have too much shelving. Uh, this will give me space to put my empty Bitcoal containers in. Uh, but also, this gives me a good working platform to service my miner, to get things set up. And if by chance I do have to take a miner out of the fluid, I can simply put a piece of plastic down on that plywood and drain the fluid back in the tank. So when it comes to orienting the tank, uh, as you can see, I've got the tank outlets and inlets facing outward. Uh, this gives me really good access to them. Uh, this is gonna be really important later on when I'm building my piping system. And if by chance I have to chase leaks, it makes it really accessible and easy to fix things. Now, as you can see, I fully insulated my tank. Uh, as we talked about in previous episodes, uh, this room is not well ventilated. Uh, any heat getting into this room is really not gonna have an easy way out. And so I really have to manage my heat with my design. Uh, to do that, I've got a two layer insulation system. Uh, I've got a half inch of garage door foam insulation followed by an inch and a half of foam board. I've got links below for all of this if you wanna build something similar. Uh, but in general, this should keep the heat contained within the tank and hopefully keep the heat in the room fairly low. Now, if you notice, I've got a lid built for the top of the tank. Uh, I built this myself, half inch uh, HDPE with a couple handles off of Amazon. Um, in general, I will have a layer of insulation on top of this as well, but right now I don't know where my cables are going to be passing through that lid. So I'm going to wait uh, to insulate this until after I've got that figured out. But in general, this is going to have the same layer of insulation as the rest of the tank, again, to keep all the heat in. So with my tank design and built in place, uh, the next thing I want to talk about are things that I got wrong along the way. Uh, number one, uh, in past episodes, I've made this comment about having the dielectric fluid freeze in northern climates. Well, that was me just reading data online and not really having anything in-house to work with. Uh, I did get my Bitcoin uh, delivered, I started playing with it, and I put some into a freezer, and this is what I found. Um, honestly, it doesn't freeze solid. It actually flows pretty well. So really, when it comes to those past comments, um, the fluid is a little thicker than when it is at room temperature, so it may stress your pump a little more to pump through your radiator and other parts of your system, but it's not freezing, it's not rupturing anything, so definitely got that wrong. 
Okay, so the next thing I would have done differently is I probably would have done a little more research into building a metal tank. Uh, in general, all tanks out there are generally made out of metal. Plastic is the exception, and I'm a little concerned if that's going to give me problems long term. If I had to do this again, I would have reached out to a local metal shop and really seen what I could have done with a metal design. So now when it comes to the design of the tank, one thing I definitely would have done differently is gone with a thinner tank wall. Um, as we talked about before, this is HDPE, um, half inch thick plastic. Uh, that's way, way, way overbuilt. It really doesn't need to be that thick. Uh, way too strong for what I'm doing with it. Uh, 3 16 maybe a quarter inch would have probably been appropriate. Now the plastic shop uh, really did like the thick plastic for thermal welding. They could machine in bevels, make this really done well. Uh, but yeah, it probably made this tank significantly more expensive than if I would have went with some thinner plastic. Now another design feature I probably would have changed is this central divider wall. Um, when I designed this tank, I found a plastic industrial design online and I kind of copied it and they had dividers between each of their tanks. Um, if you look at modern tanks from most manufacturers, they don't have that. And although this is going to add additional rigidity to keep the tank from bowing out under fluid pressure, it really is not needed. And I am concerned that this is going to impede flow between the tanks and may end up causing one of these tanks to flow with more fluid than another, cooling one miner faster than the other. Um, if I had to do this again, I probably would have not had the central wall here, or if I did have a wall, it would be only spars going up uh, at different locations within the tank so that the fluid could flow back and forth more easily. Now, the next feature I would have done a little differently has to do with my hot coolant recovery. Um, as you can see, it only goes down part way. Uh, if you look at most designs out there, most designs have this extending all the way to the bottom of the tank. Um, this did decrease the cost of my system in that I had to spend less money on plastic, but overall, this gives me less of a buffer in that I have to be more exact in terms of how much fluid I put into the tank. So another design error I made has to do with the height of the tank. Uh, I based this height on a S19, and unfortunately for me, I forgot that when you put an S19 into immersion cooling, you remove the fans, and that reduces the height of the miner by about three or so inches. So the overall height of the tank is a little too high. Um, that's not going to create a big problem. I can just raise up that adjustable flow plate to account for that, um, but it means I'm using more fluid that I didn't have to use, which makes it a little more expensive. So again, when you're designing your own system, remove the fans when you calculate the size of your miners. Now the last big design regret I have has to do with the size of the fittings on the inlets and outlet of the tank. Uh, these are one inch NPT fittings. Now when it comes to the piping I intend to use, uh, as I'll talk about in the next couple episodes, uh, I'm looking to use Schedule 40 CPVC piping. And it turns out that for that style of piping, they don't make a female NPT fitting in a one inch size. And so I'm gonna to have to add another adapter, which is gonna add more opportunities for leaking. So if I had to do this again, I'd keep everything the same size, everything three quarter inch all the way around. So that's all I have for this episode. Uh, my tank is built, set in place, and ready to go. Uh, next episode, we're gonna cover the design of heat exchangers, pumps, and that minor cooling loop. So with that, Bye.